Right, Sonic Advance 2 is now finished, and I thought that I'd make this bonus video pointing out extra parts that I want to show off. These will be small little bits that I forgot to mention in my playthrough of the game, including the extra unlockables, other endings, etc. So enjoy the bonus video, and I hope you like what I have included. Okay, so the Sonic Advance series had three games all together in the 2000s. They were Sonic Advance 1, Sonic Advance 2, and Sonic Advance 3. To show some differences, I have made a montage of the intros in the game, comparing how different they are from each other. Enjoy! Okay, in episode 7 of the LP, you may have seen me show off this little animation Sonic has when you press up on the D-pad while standing still. Well, I felt the need to show off the other characters' animations, which also reveals their personality a bit more. So, first we got Sonic. He likes to be a bit of a show off and is ready to charge through levels any day. He's a very ambitious character. Then we got Cream. Cream just pulls out an ice cream out of nowhere and is happily eating it. This shows that her age is quite young due to her excitement over ice cream. Afterwards we move on to Tails. Tails just yawns and goes to... sleep. I have no idea what this shows in his personality. <laughs> Maybe he's just tired. Finally we have Knuckles the Echidna. When he does his animation, he shows off his strength and bravery by punching his fists continuously, showing that he's a tough guy to mess with. That's all of the animations though, and what a waste of development that was for Sega. If you go into options on the menu screen, you'll find this tab called Level. This allows you to change the level of difficulty in the game to either Easy or Normal. I have played the game throughout the LP in normal mode, so I thought that I'd compare the two showing how different they are when fighting bosses. Yeah, that's all that's different. The bosses. Anyway, let's see. So basically, the big difference between normal and easy mode are the number of hits it takes to destroy the bosses. Here I have put in two videos where one is played on easy mode while the other is on normal. This will show the difference in the number of hits it takes to defeat the boss, which will help out on the time it takes to beat it.
As you can see, in easy mode, the boss has been beaten first and takes 6 hits to defeat it, whereas normal mode is still going and it takes 8 hits to defeat the boss. So, you get 2 hits less on the first boss. Basically, when you fight a boss in easy mode, the amount of hits decrease, making life a bit easier for you if you find the game a bit hard. Next, I will go on about the extra unlockables in the game. When you collect all of the Chaos Emeralds and clear the XX zone as different characters, you unlock some goodies that add to your collection. Well, they're not really goodies because of what you have to go through to unlock them. Anyway, if you collect all of the Chaos Emeralds with any character and clear the final zone, you unlock... The Tiny Chow Garden! Yeah! We collected all of the Emeralds for a garden! A Chow Garden! When you collect all of the Emeralds and clear the final zone with two characters, you unlock... A Sound Test! What a brilliant reward! Then, when you do the same thing with three characters, you unlock the option to fight bosses in time attack mode! Excellent! And finally, the ultimate unlockable in the game. When you collect all the emeralds as every single character, and clear the final zone in the game, the last important bonus you get is... To be able to play as Amy Rose! Well... That's a large amount of my life wasted. Okay, so Chow Garden is like a virtual pet unlockable. Simply, you have this Chow that you take care of, and it gains better abilities the more you treat it. You can strike it on the head, give the Chow some food that can be purchased with your rings, and other things that make it look as if you're taking care of your own pet. And yes, that's how much rings I've collected throughout this Let's Play. A lot. You can acquire rings for either two ways. You can, one, go on the main adventure and collect loads of rings when blasting through levels or special stages, like me, or two, go on to the mini games in the Chow Garden. The mini games are, well, games that are mini and you must do a certain thing in each one to acquire rings. In this one, you must use a spring to keep Cheese the Chow in the air collecting rings. If cheese hits the ground, then you lose a life, and if you lose all of them, it's a game over. If you press the A button at the right moment when cheese lands on the spring, you can launch him up higher, which will help for later levels. Once you have collected all of the rings in that level, you then go on to the next one, only they're higher up this time, making it a bit more tricky, and it continues going on and on until you get a game over. So, if you don't fancy grabbing rings by blasting through levels, you can choose this instead. The next minigame plays a bit like Snap, where you get given a set of cards. Cheese shuffles them about, and you must use your memory to pick out the correct pairs. I personally find it easier to just collect rings in the adventure, so that's why I didn't bother with this one too much. See, I've already got a game over. Depending on what mood your chow is, sometimes it will refuse to do things. For instance, when your belly meter is full up, your chow will refuse to eat the food. So sometimes you want to keep an eye on the mood and hunger levels of your pet to ensure you don't waste any rings. I know from experience. In fact, sometimes when you take care of your chow, it will pop up with annotations saying something. So that's nice. In short, the Chow Garden is basically a daycare mechanic in Sonic Advance 2, where you take care of your newly born Chow and raise it up by treating it well. Kind of similar to Nintendo in a way. The only downside I have with this is what you need to go through to unlock it in the first place. 7. Chaos Emeralds May I remind you that in its predecessor, Sonic Advance, the Chow Garden was available right from the start of the game. So players wanting to do gaming that revolved around taking care of something could easily jump right into it and not worry about unlocking it in the adventure. Why they had to make the player collect all of the emeralds and clear the game to unlock it, I will never know. God, so stupid. Right, next is the sound test. Well, it's a sound test. You play sounds and music taken from the game, and all of it is there. 
not much to say really. It was how I got the music from my intro though. So the sound test is useful if you want to listen to the soundtrack of the game, or if you want to record sounds and music from it, just like I did in my intro. Again, it's a good feature, but it's just the requirements it takes to unlock in it that ruins it. 14 Chaos Emeralds just to unlock a damn sound test. Which, may I remind you again, was available right from the start in Sonic Advance. So all those emeralds just to unlock a sound test. Brilliant. Time for bosses. If you go into time attack, you'll find that the boss mode is unlocked and you can fight the bosses any day. Yeah, at the start you can do the zones in time attack mode, but not the bosses. That makes sense. So you have to collect 21 Chaos Emeralds to unlock this. If anything, I'd rather just go on the main adventure, clear out two in a zone, and jump into a boss I want to fight that way. That's so much easier. Wouldn't it have been better to unlock the boss mode the moment you defeat the first boss in the game? Ah, uh, whatever. The boss mode is basically a place where you select a boss you, you want to fight from the game. One thing that's interesting about this is that they reveal each of Dr. Eggman's contraptions names on the selection screens. So you have the Egg Hammer Tank 2 in Zone 1, Egg Bomber Tank in Zone 2, Egg Totem in Zone 3, I kind of got that right in my LP. Again it is Dr. Eggman except he's on like this totem pole. Aero Egg in Zone 4, Egg Saucer in Zone 5. Egg Go Round in Zone 6. And finally, the Egg Frock in Zone 7. I could have mentioned those in my LP, actually. Once you've decided what boss to fight, you must try to defeat it in your best time possible. Also, don't bother switching the level to easy mode, thinking it will take less time to kill them, as it takes the same number of hits, whatever level you're on. So don't think you can cheat out of this. The only bosses that aren't available to fight in boss mode are the final bosses. That's all there is to say really. It's a boss mode where you can show off your skills to defeating them with your fastest times possible. The same goes for zone mode, only it's your fastest time clearing the stages. Now we're on to the final unlockable, Amy Rose! And what a terrible journey it was to unlock her. Again, this character was playable right from the start in Sonic Advance. Great work, Sega! Okay, so Amy Rose is basically a clone of Sonic, where most of our actions are the same as him. Only she has her Pico Pico hammer with her to fight enemies with. Her up animation is very different, where she jumps up and down in excitement. Yeah, that's always different. She's pretty much Sonic in most ways. So, all 28 Chaos Emeralds just to unlock a female Sonic. Fantastic. Oh, and it doesn't end there, as with new character, that means you get the option to collect more Chaos Emeralds. Joy. When you collect all 35 Chaos Emeralds in the game and clear the final zone as Amy, you unlock... Nothing? What? So... Collect all of the Chaos Emeralds as her for absolutely nothing? Wow! Well, there's one thing that's different, and that is the background of the ending. When you don't collect all of the Emeralds as a character and clear the final zone, you just land at Leaf Forest instead. Yeah, that's it. That's your reward for collecting every Chaos Emerald in the game. All 35 Chaos Emeralds. The same background as all of the other characters. Wonderful. Well, that's my life wasted. Okay, digressing from ranting about the game, I said in my LP that in a bonus video, I would show off all of the special ring locations on Act 1 in every zone. The Act 1 special rings I will show off in a bonus video. Well, to make sure the bonus video isn't too long, I have made this a separate video. So if you want to know the whereabouts of the special rings in Act 1, click here or the link in the description below. You don't have to if you don't want to though. It'll make the bonus video too long if I included it in here. 
Lastly, I thought that I'd show you all the endings in the game with each character when you clear the final zone with all the Chaos Emeralds. Enjoy! When you clear the final zone without the Chaos Emeralds, you get treated to this after the credits. What? No way! I'm not wasting my time doing that all over again. If I want to play the unlockables, I'm just going to boot up Sonic Advance and do it right from the start. Screw that mess. Now, there is this extra thing that I'd like to mention, which is the multiplayer and link cable feature in Sonic Advance 2. But, unfortunately, I do not have a link cable, multiple Game Boy Advance systems, or even a GameCube. So, if you want to know about the multiplayer and link up feature in the game, I'd suggest looking it up in Google or something. I'm sorry that I can't show this off. So, I think that's everything I have to say about Sonic Advance 2. I have enjoyed playing the game, well, besides collecting 35 Chaos Emeralds, but everything else was great. Well, that's it for Sonic, now time to move on to a new Let's Play. Yep, my fifth LP will be coming shortly, and I'll give you clues as to what it is. It's a Game Boy game. It is based on another game in the series, and it has that... ...sound. My next Let's Play will be Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins for the Game Boy. Uh, that's a very long title. A game based on Super Mario World for the SNES. So, I guess I will see you guys in my next LP. Bye for now, and I hope you have enjoyed Sonic Advance 2.